Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for April the 26th. I'm Jonathan Kienzler. Today's scripture reading is found in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and Luke chapter 19 verses 28 through 48. The title of my devotional is A Humble King and we're looking at Luke 19 verse 41 which says, When he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. Jesus is a king like no other. He is a humble king who lays his life down for those who don't appreciate him or yet know him. He comes to Jerusalem on the most humblest of animals, a donkey's colt. Jesus does not come as a conquering king, but one who lays his life down on behalf of others. He comes on the beast of burden, a beast of service, and that illustrates his own purpose also to not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for others. Lest any would mistake his humility for weakness, Jesus reveals his supernatural knowledge, stating the specific cult's location, its tied-up state, its unridden history, and how to procure it. And we see that in Luke 19, verse 31 um, and following. He is in control of events, and his life is in accordance to the will of God, in fulfillment of Scripture. Genesis 49, verse 11, he ties his foal to the vine and his donkey's colt to the choice vine. He washes his garments in wine and his, ro- his robes in the blood of grapes. Zechariah 9, 9 also declared, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And so when he sees the city, his humility is demonstrated in terms of how he feels about Jerusalem. He weeps over it. He knows that its enemies will besiege the city and destroy it completely. And that's what he says about it. He prophesies in verses 43 and 44, For the days will come upon you when your enemies will throw up a barricade against you and surround you and hem you in on every side. And they will level you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. That is the time of of God's visitation in Christ, that he has come not to destroy Jerusalem, but to save it, that he has come to give his life even for the nation and for all people. As distressed as he is about going to his death for all humankind, and we see that in Luke 12, 50, I have a baptism to undergo and how distressed I am until it is accomplished. It's not for himself that he demonstrates such strong emotion, but for others. As we see, he weeps over Jerusalem. Peace has been hidden from their eyes for now, Luke 9, 42 says. Um, If you had known in this day, even you, the things which make for peace. In other words, you could have peace. If you would turn to me, I would deliver you. I would save you. I would heal you. But now they have been hidden from your eyes. And it's the prince of this world that even places a veil over the hearts and over the eyes of of people. But this will not always be the case. They will have opportunity to repent, even through Gentiles who have been shown mercy. Paul says in Romans 11, 31, so these also now have been disobedient, that because of the mercy shown to you, that is Gentiles, they also may now be shown mercy. That Through your obedience, they would also turn. They would see that God is pouring out a spirit on the Gentiles and turn to God in repentance and faith. Zechariah 12.10 goes on to say, They will look on him whom they pierced. Um, And that's also quoted in John 19.37. Again, another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they pierced. Jesus weeps over people who refuse to come to him. It hurts. He's been pierced even in the heart because of our disobedience. And literally, our sin causes his piercing. He is pierced for our transgressions. Um, But he then, on the other hand, rejoices over those who repent. And we see that in Luke chapter 10, 21, over the great plan of God when Jesus sent out the 70 and they return rejoicing at what they have seen. Verse 
21 says, At that very time he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent, have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this was well-pleasing in your sight. What's your response to the all-powerful, all-knowing Lord who gave his life for you? Does Jesus weep because of your transgressions, because of your disobedience? Or does he rejoice over you because you've turned to him? And that's a question. What is our response to the king who gave his life for you? His visitation even, his coming to earth, and his dying even on your behalf. What's your response? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus. That while we were enemies, you that you sent Jesus to die for us. And we thank you, Lord, that... It hurt you to see us in our sin and in our misery. But God, what is our response? I pray that we would have responses that would respond in faith, that we would come to you. We wouldn't desire to hurt you, but Lord, we would want you to rejoice over us. And in that, we would rejoice as we come to you, come into your presence and we're blessed. We're, even as the prodigal son was given a robe uh, of even of, of sonship and sandals on his feet and a ring on his hand, you desire to do that to all who come to you. And so, Lord, we just are so thankful that you loved us so much. You didn't leave us the way we are, but you brought us back into your family, into your house, uh, and made us your children. In your name we pray. Amen.